America. I'm doing a ammo can giddy, as you can see. I figured I would kind of show you a couple of things that uh, are unique, at least I think are unique. The way I build a cigar box guitar, uh, building an ammo can obviously creates a couple of different challenges. Things that need to be addressed, but uh, uh, have to be addressed differently than you, what you would do on a normal cigar box guitar. Um, so number one, square in the neck in the box. That's uh, a little, uh, I think, creates a little bit of a different challenge. So just, just kind of showing the way I do it doesn't mean this is the right way or the only way or, or whatever, but that's the way I do it. So uh, I've cut, I went ahead and cut the relief for the neck, and that's pretty straightforward. Put your little uh, centering jig on there or find your center. Uh, get, make sure you uh, figure out your height in the box. So you want this piece to come over the top just a little bit. Maybe flush, but just a little bit. Remember, there's going to be a quarter inch uh, fretboard on top of that that's going to raise it up even further. But, you know, I always like this about an eighth of an inch ish above, uh, above the can. So, once I do that, I will uh, take a measurement inside here and figure out what the distance is from the bottom to the very top of this lip. And uh, once I do that, I'll just cut a couple of blocks that that are to that measurement. You can uh, see that block is in there. It's pretty flush with this uh, corner piece. I'll do one for the front and one for the back. Front's not necessary. I just I do two anyway. But the one for the back is the most important one. So this will get glued inside the box up against the back wall. And this piece right here will come down and rest on it. And that's what will help me uh, square this in the box. I'll show you that here in a second. The other thing is this relief here, I use uh, hardtail bridges. So I need uh, something to screw to. So again, I'll have this piece uh, glued inside the box. It'll give me something to uh, screw my bridge to. But all of this, this neck, that's the other difference is, you know, usually I put blocks underneath this and screw the neck down to the bottom of the box. Well, this is going to get screwed in to, from the top. I'll put a screw right here, and I'll also put a screw in the very back that will pull this into the, the top of the box. So this will make good contact. But anyway, I'm going to put this neck in here. I just cut this not too long ago. Still got some... Uh, Maybe a little bit of filing to do. Ah, there we go. She's in there now. All right. So as I'm lining up that, or getting ready to pre-drill my hole for that uh, screw in the back, that's where this comes in handy. I will put that, I'll have that block will already be glued in there. And then I can push down on it. And I can make sure that neck is square in the box. So that's the, that's one of the major differences in building a ammo can giddy. I'm not going to go through the, the neck and all that stuff. You, hopefully you've watched my other videos and you've seen that on my other videos. Uh, if you haven't, go back and check those out. Uh, I'm just going to kind of show you the things that I think are unique to building uh, building out of this ammo can. So, all right, here we go. Excuse the mess. Uh, I said I would only show some unique things now. Uh, these cans, at least in my experience, I have everything cut out, ready to rock and roll. But there's really not enough room to get inside here and try to solder these pots together. So on a cigar box guitar, I would put the pots in the lid. I could flip the lid open and 
and solder everything right there in the box. So I really don't, uh, maybe I, you know, I don't know. Maybe somebody could, but I can't solder inside of that box. There's just not enough room. So I have soldered everything here. So everything will fit through the pickup opening on the box, except for the jack. That's why I got these little alligator clips. So I've soldered the wires and then I've clipped these alligator clips to them just so I can check, make sure that my wiring is sound. So there's, uh, there's that. Uh, let me turn this uh, tone knob the other way. All the way. It is adjusting the tone. Off. There you go. So just want to make sure before I put all this uh, in the box that uh, everything is, is working properly. So I know you see wire sticking out here. So let me explain. This is a humbucker. And so these two wires are soldered together. If you wanted to split the coils, you would use these two. But since I don't use them, once I put them in a the box, uh, well, before I put them in a the box, I'm going to zip tie these backward back here. And I'll put some hot glue around them to keep them, hopefully, to keep them from, you know, grounding out on the box. And then this wire here is the wire that's going to be used to uh, ground my strings. So that's why you see these extra wires uh, hanging out there. So that's not going to affect anything. Um, the only things that have to be soldered are these, these two wires here, which, uh, like I said, I'll run everything, put it inside the box, then I can drag these wires out the back, and I'll actually solder them to this piece. So you can see I have a seven eighths inch hole uh, so this will go screw on this will screw on the outside of that and cover that hole so that's just one you know i mean everybody does things differently but again to me it's easier to cut the wires exactly and solder it inside the box but uh trying to get inside that little can just doesn't work for me so this is the process so this is all soldered up. I got a couple more things to do on that can, and then uh, I'll be uh, putting these uh, pots in there and getting everything uh, buttoned up real soon. Okay, getting ready to put this thing together. I thought I'd just show you the inside before uh, before I put it together. But one of the things with these uh, metal boxes is uh, not a whole lot of thickness, a whole lot of area to screw anything to. So when you're screwing in like your pickup cover, the bridge, or even uh, the input jack, yeah, I put some wood on the inside. So I cut pieces of wood uh, and then glued them to the inside so I'd have something for the, for the screws to bite. But there you go. So this one does have a tone and a volume knob. You can see all the wiring's in there, and you can see that it's, uh, it's glued down so it don't rattle around. So getting about time to put this thing together. stop before I push my luck. There you go. That is the ammo. Ammo can get it. Huh? Look at that. Boom. Nice little flag with an eagle logo on there. Our tail bridge. There's your input jack right there. Uh, it's a nice eagle logo on there. It's a fret dot marker and then the diamonds. Kind of my standard thing. And then 
Look at that. Oh yeah. And then, oh yeah. So this piece of maple right here, these are two different pieces of maple. This one's white. This one's got some green in it, man. That's why I picked it. I think it matches that can. Awesome. Yeah, look at that. Uh, action's really good on this thing. Still getting it tuned up. But, uh, yeah, she's good to go. Come out real nice. I need to chop the strings off there. Oh, yeah. I figure, you know, you need to accessorize your ammo can, so you might as well accessorize it with a piece of 550 cord green. You know, so it fills it out like it's supposed to. But yeah. She sounds good. And I literally just got this thing intonated, so I'm still kind of tuning on it and, and messing with it a little bit. Um, you know, the slide sounds good. Yeah, she does all right with a slide too. Uh, like I said, still tuning her up, getting her. Uh, she she got her, got it intonated, letting the string stretch a little bit, playing around with it, making sure the action's uh, good. But so far, seems about right. Um, I think she came out nice. I plan on doing a few more of these. I wanted to put one on my site, see how it does. Uh, I do have a couple more cans. Uh, I think. Uh, my next uh, uh, thing I want to try on one of these as well is I want to try to extend this uh, graphic onto the pickup. I got to do some experiment and see how that comes out, but that's what I'm thinking about doing. So uh, we'll see how that goes. And I can put this cover on here and put the pickup on here, lower it down so it'll get it as flat as possible. Um, and then try to see about uh, getting the getting that graphic extended so they're all it's all one one unit. But came out nice. Um, this is my first attempt at uh, doing the the extra piece in the middle. I always do the wings, so you always get this uh, piece of piece these two pieces on the outside. But I split this and did the middle. Like I said, I know you can see the line here real well. These two pieces of maple are not the same. Um, obviously, um, not the same color. I'm not a big fan of staining uh, nice hardwood. Why would you? I just don't like putting a different color on it. I like the natural colors of it, so I just usually tongue all these. That's what's on this one. Um, but I did like the green here. So this was full disclosure. This piece, along with this piece, and there's a middle section uh, along with this piece, excuse me this piece and this piece, uh, we're gonna be a uh, full neck. Uh, and I had a little issue in the middle, so I, I wanted to salvage as much as possible, so that's why this whole heel, all the way to the back you saw in the video, is, uh, is like that. And then this piece up here, but still came out nice. I am gonna do another guitar eventually and I'll do the split neck all the way down on the back side so thanks for uh checking this out i hope you really like this video i'm gonna cut these strings here in a little bit they're starting to annoy me as well but i wanted to leave them on there while i'm getting this done oh the, yeah these do have lock and tuners so i don't know how well how much if you're paying attention real well or not but you notice that the strings aren't wrapped 
you know, a hundred times around the post. That's because they're these are locking tuners uh, on the on the back of these guitars. So basically, I pull them out. They're they're really slack. I tighten up the locker. Get like a maybe one full wind on there. They hold, stay good. So there you go. Ammo, whoo, and get you.